News Talk Radio 710 KNUS introduces the Private Label University, the only show that dares to unlock the secrets to your online selling success so you can start making money and, and living, living your, your dreams. dreams. I want to be a billionaire so freaking bad. With over 35 years of sourcing, private labeling, and importing products for the big chain stores and coaching thousands of entrepreneurs, all while building their personal businesses, let's welcome our Private Label University hosts, the fabulous, lovable, and cutest dynamic duo, Karen and Neil Gortzman. So welcome to the Private Label University. We are your hosts, Karen and Neil Gortzman, and this is where we unlock the secrets each week to your online selling success. So visit us over at www.privatelabeluniversity.com where we offer a ton of free content and where you will find our eight-week import success formula program, the formula to sourcing and importing products so you too can start selling products on Amazon or online and start making the money that everyone's talking about. And while you're over there on our website, leave us a message or a question and we'll answer it on our show. So we'd love to start off each show with an Amazon find. We help so many entrepreneurs source and import products that they, they can sell them on Amazon, but we too love to Shopping shop on, on Amazon. Amazon. <laughs> so Neil, what is the amazing find that you found this well, week? I guess the tough, you know, Karen always comes to me when I'm buying. She buys quite a bit too, but I, do. I guess I, I'm, at, uh, I'm held responsible here as well because I shop all the time on Amazon. I just love using Amazon. Just easy. Um, so this week I found something that was very handy. My kids were love to make cupcakes and, you know, they look at all these custom cupcake shops and they see these amazing cupcakes cakes and they thought they'd try them at home and my daughter's taking a paper plate and she's trying to decorate turning the paper plate and I said you know what there must be an easier way and so I went and watched some of these cupcake shows uh, which my kids are like why are you watching that but in any Love case I shows. saw they were using this little rotating table piece like a kind of a, a rotating item in any case I went online I did a little work on Google and I found this this item called the master airbrush smooth rotating lazy Susan that's a real long one, but it, it's it, it's an it's this little circular um, kind of like a dish that's on ball bearings, and you can move it around. And I guess it was designed for the hobby and the craft industry, where if someone's doing airbrush work and they're spraying these modelers who build these you know high tech little models and they want to spray paint it, but to turn around so you can turn it with your hand, it's it just turns real smoothly around, or you can spin it even if you want to do like a fast motion. So I found they're also using them in the baking industry, and they recommend all these different ways of they put cakes on there, just like the cake boss or one of those guys would use. And as he, you know, squeezes out his icing, he just turns the the bottom of this around, and that's how he creates those beautiful cakes and cupcakes. So it's called the Master Airbrush Brush Smooth Rotating Lazy Susan. It's a long one, but it was on Amazon. Uh, it was only I think it was eleven dollars and ninety nine cents. It was pretty cheap. Um, Again, came in a couple days, and my kids love it. Because, and it's actually a nice thing just to have out. Yeah. And well, just so you can just display. Just display. So if, if, or even if you have, like, all these different condiments, and you're putting them out on the table, and your kids, instead of grabbing over, it's on. They just spin it around, just like, you know, a lazy Susan would be. Mm -hmm. But for making cakes and, yeah, displaying a cake, if you have all kinds of desserts, and you have them at a party, just put a little cover on it and... You there just play you it, but yeah, really handy. Actually, I'm going to buy a couple more just to have because really? <laughs> not, not for cupcakes, more. but just because I do a lot of you know little modeling and sometimes I'm building models and hand painting them. And this is a really easy way to do it. I love to do a little bit of airbrushing here and there, so uh, a, a nice kind of a, a not a cheating method for for spray painting the models, but. Um, everyone's doing it. it seems uh, mm -hmm. they have all kinds of these descriptions and showing all these different modelers and these cake, th these cupcake people and cake masters using it. So now I found out how they lay that icing on ah, so perfectly the all the out. way around. It's the Master Airbrush Smooth Rotating Lazy Susan on Amazon, $11.99. And that was a great find for me and my family. And, of mm -hmm. course, my kids are real happy with that. So. And a mouthful. Yeah, a it's mouthful. a mouthful. Yes. Definitely. So today's show, we decided to bring back by popular demand – Customs broker and specialist, Scott Blizzard. So, Neil, will you do the honors? Again, we are so honored to have Scott Blizzard. He's an executive licensed national United States customs broker. He has over 35 years' experience in international importing and exporting. He's worked for some of the largest apparel, textile, food, and specialty product industries. Uh, he's been hired by some of the most respected customs 
customs firms in the nation, and he's always on active duty as a licensed broker and a consultant, and he works with some of the leading importers in North America. And Scott is an absolute wealth of information. If anyone who's heard us heard him on our, our other show, he is an expert in fields such as textiles, museum work, sensitive products, FDA products. He really knows it all, and he's up to date. Um, he's always been called, he's kind of the go-to person for many freight and logistics companies. Um, he's really a leading consultant and expert, and he's worked with customs officials in East Coast and West Coast, and even uh, major legal teams for uh, U.S. Customs have come to him as a go-to person because he's worked in so many industries. So again, we are so honored and proud to have uh, him here on our show. And uh, we know, he's, yeah, he's got such a busy schedule, so mm-hmm. thank you so much again, uh, Mr. Blizzard, for being here. Welcome. Thank you for having me. And I, I always start, I say to people, you know, I'm sure uh, Mr. Blizzard has seen so many strange things imported and exported, and uh, it must be a fascinating business to be in because you see the products that are coming into the country and leaving the country. And I'm sure there's items that, you know, under, you know, secret vaults type of thing that no one ever knows about, but you're the guy who's, you know, kind of signed those, those documents to make sure that uh, uh, it's under lock and key and, and a secret, isn't it? Uh, that's true. Um, boy, there's, you know, confidentiality with clients. We can't really say a whole lot, but yes, um, it's been a very eye-opening experience um, in the field uh, to see the things that do come in and out of the country, things that people wouldn't think about. Um, you, get on a, you get on a light rail train. Those parts were, many of them were imported, many different cities even, um, different things. Um, you, you turn on a light switch. Nuclear power plants have been imported for the desert southwest. Um, parts for them, you name it, um, wow. all that kinds of foods, clothing, um, parts, just things you wouldn't even think about. Um, so we, you know, all, we, we get so it is important. we get so many calls. We have a lot of people at a private label university and our students uh, who are in the physical product business, and especially uh, with Amazon importing products, um, you know, starting a business or even retailers who are in business. And you know, we touched upon in I know in in previous uh, uh, conversations and on our calls about these uh keeping bringing in small shipments you know keeping it under the the eight hundred dollar value to get them in quickly is that something that you recommend or if someone is really planning on ramping up a business um what, what are your comments on that well um I mean, the law is there um it's certainly not illegal to do it um i would give a couple words of caution uh, customs has been looking into this um they know that the e-commerce is a big thing, something that they're probably missing out on as far as compliance and perhaps even collecting money or duties that are, are owed to the government. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not wanna go as far as saying they're reassessing the dollar value. Uh, but they're they're they are looking into what they can do to make sure that things are not slipping into the country that perhaps should be um, declared. So it, it, now, it's, it's not, you know, I, someone, someone shouldn't think that uh, just keeping it under $800 that they're going to avoid duties. Everything is dutiable, correct? Uh, Customs reserves the right to stop a shipment and demand a formal entry, even if it was worth $10, if they wanted to. Um, do I think they would do that? No. Uh, but Customs, yes, they reserve the right. If they, they suspect something with the shipment or just in a, you know, mm, say something from that manufacturer has flagged them in the past, they certainly can say, you know what, it's $800, yeah, the law says you can bring this in without making an entry, but I want an entry and I want to bond, find a broker, and, you know, clear this. Well, it's certainly going to delay the shipment. It's going to add a little bit to the cost. But, no, customs can do that. Um, I would expect that maybe even they'll start doing that as they reformulate their thoughts on this on e-commerce. Um, so, customs do does have, say, so customs does have the right to open and look at any shipment coming in, air or ocean. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, they, you know, diplomatic pouches are one thing. We all know that there's diplomatic immunity, and that's a whole other story. Uh, but any commercial type shipment, is which, which is what we're talking about, um, they have the absolute right and authority to stop it, to look at it, uh, to bring in other government agencies. Say you were bringing in, um, oh, just something that comes to my mind, and I don't know why. It probably is because I'm older. Uh, Jack, you know, the the game for sure. Kids. Um, again, maybe this day and age, we think that's a choking hazard. Um, they might want to bring in the Consumer Product Safety Commission. This is uh, you have all your your certificates in line. And this is something um, that is um, something I think a concern for many many people. 
Um, this is actually great information. However, we need to take a quick break here, and we will be right back after the short break. We are Karen and Neil Gortzman with the Private Label University. But let's revisit that question, yeah, great um, question. because I think this is um, something that is people a concern yeah. for people. Great. Absolutely. We'll be right back. News Talk 710 KNUS. <laughs> Are you ready to kick that sugar addiction, reduce belly fat, and still enjoy delicious sweets and breads? Yes, it is possible. Recipe for Wellness is a company that is run by Karen Russell, a world-renowned certified health coach and nutritionist with over 20 years of experience working with the most challenging health issue facing our society. Karen has figured out the secret to a healthier life for all of us without sacrificing sweets and offers very yummy products like cookies, brownies, and breads that are actually healthy for you. That's right. Cookies and bread that are not only delicious, but healthy, too. If you're ready to lose weight, increase your energy levels, sleep soundly, reduce stress, take control of your health, and not have to give up sweets or bread, then visit RecipeForWellness.com. That's Recipe, the number four, Wellness.com. Again, to shop online for delicious and healthy sweets, visit RecipeForWellness.com. Start living your healthier life without guilt today. Would an extra $1,000 a month, $5,000 a month, or even $10,000 a month help you live a better life? It doesn't have to stop there. People just like you are making thousands of dollars selling products on Amazon. The best part is, it's simple. All you need is a product. Karen and Neil Gortzman, creators of Private Label University, are here to show you how. How to find that perfect product so you can join millions of people and start making the money that everyone is talking about on Amazon. Private Label University unlocks 35 years of secrets about sourcing, importing, and private labeling products for big chain stores. Karen and Neil truly believe in you. So much that they'll invest $500 towards your tuition in the Private Label University program, the Import Success Formula. Go to Karen and Neil's website at privatelabeluniversity.com and enroll in the Import Success Formula program. Enter code PLU for $500 off your tuition of the program when paid in full. So what are you waiting for? Head over to privatelabeluniversity.com and sign up today. We now return to the Private Label University with your hosts, Karen and Neil Gortzman on News Talk 710 KNUS. Well, welcome back to the show. You are listening to Karen and Neil Gortzman with the Private Label University. We were just talking with Scott, who is a licensed U.S. customs broker and a wealth of information to anyone who wants information about how to import products into the U.S. Hassle he free. is the Google of experts. Yeah. He's, he's going to be, yeah, yeah, he's, you know, the microfiche of masters of brokerage and we were just talking about um you know customs has the right really on any product on any shipment coming into the nation uh they have the right to inspect it or at least look at it. isn't that correct scott that's absolutely correct and you're telling us you were telling us a story about uh the game jacks you know, <laughs> i remember uh, as a kid that game i loved it where you bounce the ball and pick up the jacks and have to catch a ball um kind of dating myself here, but you said there was something uh, regarding that game with as far as uh, what it well, implied. Again, I was just using it, something that came to my head as, a, as an example. Uh, someone, you know, importing, we're talking about under $800, um, where technically an entry is not made to customs, a declaration is not made to customs because of the value, it's a low-value shipment. However, it is a toy, it could be used, um, children could play it. Uh, consumer Product Safety Commission would be involved, another government agency. Um, they would want to see that you have had all of your proper warnings on it, you know, intended for children or, you know, people from ages such and such. And such. Um, they have very strict rules. Now, again, just real briefly, um, if it's under $800, technically an entry is not made, but customs see something like that, they may pull that from, from being, you know, I don't want to uh, cleared, if you will, uh, from the courier and say, we want to look at this and we're going to bring in Consumer Product Safety Commission. So, yes, Customs does have the right to inspect anything, even if it's under $800. The $800 is not a magical, you can't touch me, um, dollar value limit. Um, they can bring in other agencies. And I think that's the key here because we see so many, uh, you know, different people trying to tell teach programs where they say, oh, just keep it $800 and keep in all those small shipments. Customs isn't stupid. You know, you, you have people put in place officials who watch what's coming into the country. And the idea is right. if you're going to bring in a shipment every week uh, under, under val or let's say, under the $800 mark, 
thinking that you're under the radar. Everything has to get entered into a system of, that's coming into the country, whether it's DHL, FedEx, UPS, any type of courier. Correct. Um, they're going to be notified. And if they see all these shipments coming in, you know, two, three a week, customs are going to say, hey, what does this person bring in? That's a pretty big business um, because all those shipments, they really add up. They do. They do. Uh, when you're talking an overnight document, a business document, and an envelope that's not a shipment, if you will, um, you're sending documents from your office in Hong Kong to your office in Chicago. Um, that's one thing. But when it is a an actual um, uh, commercial, commercial shipment, shipment of right. goods, a commodity, is something that's going to be sold to a consumer or a business, you know, business. Some it, there's going to be an ultimate end user for it, um, and money will change hands. Then yes, customs is concerned. Um, as we've mentioned in previous programs, um, Customs is looking into e-commerce and the dollar value limit of $800. And do they need to do things differently to uh, safeguard the economy of the United States? And and that's the key. Here. You know, you, you know, US, U.S. Customs has the right to change the rules at any time. If next week they decide to make it $500 or $300, they can do it. And the key here is, again, we always talk about the necessity to align yourself if you're starting a physical product business, if you're a retailer who's importing, to make sure you're working with people who know what they're doing, like Mr. Blizzard. Uh, he has the expertise. Um, you have to ask these questions. You know, we hear all the time, every product that comes in, um, that's categorized has a tariff code. It has what's called a harmonized tariff code. Can you can you explain what that really means, uh, Mr. Blizzard? Oh, well, certainly. Um, there, uh, the United States uses a ten-digit code um, up to, I believe, it is six digits internationally for people that are um, members of the um, uh, World Trade Organization. Um, most of the most of our major trading partners are most of the countries in the world. We all use the same um, harmonized tariff code for the classification of goods. And I'm looking in my book here. We'll just take shampoos. You know, shampoo that you would use on a on your hair. Uh, 330510 would be a harmonized tariff code for shampoos worldwide. Now, you know, there's a and you get into some other commodities that are. Mm, very protective, uh, protected, such as textiles. You know, the Hong Kong government, the Chinese government, the U.S. government might have a little difference where the shirt I'm wearing, they might place it in different places. Um, the United States has one of the most um, restrictive uh, tariffs codes going out to a full 10 digits. Other countries will go to, say, six or eight digits. Um, but every, every country has a, has a di every country has a different tariff code. Well, the ending digits can be different. Um, the ending four digits can be different. The first six digits should be the same. Wow. Okay. So then, but again, but, so you know, who, there's interpretation. <laughs> right. So it's the responsibility, of course, of the broker to know that tariff code or the person who's importing that product. Well, um, again, the law says that it is the person importing it that needs to know that. Um, most people, um, you know, smaller companies, again, the large companies that have full compliance departments with hundreds of people working in them, yes, they, you know, for financial um, concerns, they are going to have their own people classifying goods and telling the broker what they will use um, to classify because, well, I mean, they're that large. I mean, it could be hundreds of millions of dollars of duty or penalties or even higher. Uh, but for the rest of us, um, it is the importer is their responsibility. The broker will assist, um, but the broker would need to ask a lot of questions, and it's one of the reasons why we ask for things in writing. Right. So um, I, I can interrupt. Writing. That, that's a great point. What I just want to explain to to all the listeners. So to, if you're if you're in the physical product business, if you're online uh, using any Amazon or importing from Alibaba or AliExpress, it's it's necessary that. When you're starting your business, before you really get in deep in it, that reach out to a professional, an experienced customs broker, and talk to them about what you're going to do because you're going to need one, and you might as well, you have to be open. You have to uh, follow the, the rules and laws and regulations of the U.S. government, and if you have a broker who knows what they're doing, they'll, they're going to recommend you. It's kind of like they're, they're, they're not an attorney, but they know the guidelines, and the key is, you know, don't just think, oh, I'm not going to tell anybody. I'm not going to tell my broker because ultimately, like Mr. like Scott said, you're held responsible. And, you know, no, if you're going to get into a product that you know nothing about, 
Talk to a, a, a broker. Ask them what the tariff code is going to be. Ask them what the duties are going to be. Ask them what you're going to have to file. Uh, make sure they know about it because there's so many rules and regulations like anti-dumping that come into perspective here. And a lot of people don't know about that. They sometimes hear the word, the term thrown around, but it's very important. What, what do you think about that? Uh, well, I mean, as far as anti-dumping or... As far as anti-dumping, because I know we hear about it all the time. People ask questions, and we always say, sure. make sure you have a good customs broker. Sure. Um, and again, this is you know goes back to what we've been saying. Um, talk with a broker before you've imported something. Once it gets here, um, it might be too late. And if something is subject to... Uh, I've seen anti-dumping duties recently that they're assessing 200 to 400%. So if you have a shipment worth a thousand dollars, you know, four hundred percent, you're paying four thousand dollars in additional duties. Can you explain what anti? Expenses. Can you explain to the listeners what anti-dumping? What does it actually mean? So certainly, um, there's there's two two components. There's anti-dumping duty and countervailing duty. Um, in both is when that uh, uh, a U.S. industry, a U.S. company goes to our U.S. authorities and says, you know, I make this product, and I can make it for a dollar a piece. But this factory or country in whatever country they name, and our, most of our anti-dumping cases are against China. Um, that's a fact. But there's, every, you know, many other countries, European countries, um, South American, you name it, um, other Asian countries. It, it's not only China, but that is the the largest percentage of these cases, the the U.S. manufacturer goes to the government and, in a nutshell, says, you know, we can't compete anymore because their product is so less um, e expensive than ours, um, we can't compete. The U.S. does a quick, well, it, it's going to be quick these days. Um, they've reformulated their laws and what they have to do. I believe it's they have a 90-day review now to say, yes, we believe that this uh, country is selling their product in our country uh, for less than we could produce it. So in order to protect our domestic business and not have us lose that business or have it go overseas, as we so commonly hear these days with mm, politics and other things, um, they will add extra duties on the product to discourage anybody from buying that foreign product from that country or countries. So you can still bring it in. You, you can still import the product. It's just higher duties. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Um, it not only is higher duties, it affects your bond rate. Um, if, you have a, if you have a customs bond, if you're importing enough that you have a customs bond, your bond company will want to see your financial statements. Um, and sadly, um, for, for, for importers um, and brokers and everyone else involved, uh, Customs has realized, or Congress has realized, that on some of these anti-dumping cases where the duty rate is 200, 400 percent, um, if they don't collect that money up front, then maybe an importer goes out of business. They change their name, um, and then the government's not getting their money. Just real quickly, the basic importation bond is a $50,000 bond with bond with Customs. Um, there's formulas how to figure it out, but we'll just say the basic import bond, $50,000. You're importing a couple shipments, 10000 here, 10000 there, whatever. Um, these are subject to now 400% anti-dumping duty. So your $10,000 shipment now has an additional $40,000 worth of duty on it. Customs can only collect the up to the additional, you, you go out of business, we'll say you change your name or you can't pay your bankrupt, whatever the case may be, uh, Customs goes after that bond company, the surety, in order to collect their money. Well, if the bond is $50,000, they've just collected $40,000 for your first shipment, you had another shipment for $10,000 and you didn't pay the additional $40,000 duty on, Customs only has 10 more thousand dollars they can collect. They're out $30,000. And if you had any shipments past that, they, they, they have no way to collect that money. But they're going to keep an, they, U.S. Customs is going to keep an eye on you. You know, if you start trying to well, open they, up under a different name, oh, they're, they're not. Absolutely. Right. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, Scott, and the security companies are as well. Mm -hmm. But what they're going to do is ask you now, not, not just you, but everyone involved with anti-dumping, because this is the scenario that I've just addressed, 
is what is happening. So customs and the surety companies are asking for the money up front before mm-hmm. you get your shipment released. Um, Just to ensure that they, that, no, yeah, that they don't get burned. And so can you yes, give us an exactly. example an example of something that would be anti-dumping? Um, something yes, simple that people, that's common. It, um, I was going to say this probably doesn't relate to um, anyone that's listening to us right now, um, but you'll get the drift. Um, steel. We're, we're, the U.S. steel industry is very upset that there's cheap imported steel flooding the market. Um, so I'm, I'm, I, I, Scott, I'm going to report. Pen, I heard pencils fall under anti-dumping. Is that true? Pencils are. Yes, they are. Wow. So um, a common product, like even the pencil, see, is anti-dumping. And you see a lot of that on Amazon. A lot of people send sell, selling, selling pencils yeah. or pencil sets, and they're bringing them in from in from China. And um, I wonder if you know that's something that is being monitored. Um, we're going to take a quick break here. And we will come back and and continue. Yeah, continue talking about anti dumping because I think this is something that um, I think a lot of people are unfamiliar with. So we are Karen and Neil Gwartzman. We are the Private Label University, and we will be right back. Muhammad Ali's hometown is awaiting the arrival of his body, and that may happen as early as today. On Friday, Louisville will be holding a huge public funeral for the boxing legend. The worst may be over northwest of Los Angeles, where a huge brush fire broke out, sparked by a car crash. ABC's Lauren Lister reports. 3,000 homes and 5,000 residents were threatened by this fire, and there were 500 mandatory evacuations. So some of those have now been lifted, and residents are able to start returning home, and more are expected to be able to go home later this morning. So that is the good news. That California brush fire reported to be 15 percent contained. A police officer in Memphis has been killed by a suspect in a crime spree. The suspect, who's accused of mowing down the officer with his car, is in custody. Authorities say a 7-year-old boy in Maine was attacked and killed by a dog. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are trading pot shots on the Sunday TV talk shows. She's calling him dangerous. He's calling her guilty of stupidity and bad judgment. This is ABC News. Do you freak out every time? News Talk 710 KNUS. Many of us have been ignoring the latest news about the harmful effects of sugar. Why? Because we don't want to give up our yummy chocolates, cookies, and pizza. What if there was a way that you could eat healthier and not have to give any of the guilty pleasures of sweets and pizza up? RecipeForWellness.com is a company run by Karen Russell, who is a world-renowned certified health coach and nutritionist with over 20 years' experience working with the most challenging health issues facing our society. Karen Russell has created products that are not only incredibly delicious, but also healthy to eat. Karen's most popular sweet treats are her pecan cookies and delicious brownies. She uses natural ingredients that are healthy and healing. If you're ready to lose weight, increase your energy level, sleep soundly, take control of your health, and not have to give up the sweets, then check out Karen's company, RecipeForWellness.com, and start living a healthier life without the guilt. Again, that's Recipe, the number four, Wellness.com. Where do the candidates stand on economic issues critical for Coloradans? Find out when 710 KNUS and Americans for Prosperity Colorado present an economic forum for Colorado's Republican senatorial candidates. Friday, June 10th at 7 p.m. at the Omni Interlochen Hotel in Broomfield. Invited candidates include Robert Blaha, Ryan Frazier, Daryl Glenn, Jack Graham, and John Kaiser. Admission is free, or you can hear a live broadcast of the debate on 710 KNUS. For complete details, go to 710 KNUS. People who can afford a LASIK procedure sure are lucky. Imagine being less dependent on contacts and glasses. Imagine waking up tomorrow with improved vision. Too bad everyone can't afford LASIK. Well, guess what? There's a company that agrees with you. The LASIK Vision Institute is now offering dramatically low prices on high-quality LASIK to make it affordable for everyone. That means you get FDA-approved LASIK technology for a fraction of what others charge. And if you call right now, we'll schedule a free appointment so you can discover if LASIK is right for you. Call 1-800-300-5019. Even better, if you're one of the first 100 callers, ask about an extra 20% discount off our already low-cost services. Discover how you can get the quality LASIK experience you deserve at a fraction of what others charge. For your free appointment, call 1-800-300-5019. 1-800-300-5019. Individual results may vary. Please see our website for information on risks and benefits. 
Are you concerned about outliving your money? How would you like to have guaranteed growth and a lifetime of income you could never outlive? Join Al Martinez for the Retirement and Income Radio Show on Saturday at 1. You can also call Al Martinez now for your free customized Retirement and Income Kit and 115-page Retirement and Income Book at 866-901-2255. That's 866-901-2255. Private Label University with your hosts, Karen and Neil Gorsman on News Talk 710 KNUS. So for those of you just joining us, we are Karen and Neil Gortzman, and you are listening to the Private Label University where we unlock the secrets each week to your online selling success. So we have Scott Blizzard joining us, um, your go-to guy when it comes to importing products into the U.S. That's right. He's a, a, a national U.S. licensed customs broker and he really has all the answers and we were just talking about you know it comes up in a lot of our uh programs uh about anti-dumping and people who are very unfamiliar with a lot of people who are in the physical product business or retailers and i'm always amazed how retailers who import uh don't stay up to date um they should be uh sometimes they just say well i'm gonna uh rely on my customs broker but we're talking about how very common things that are everyone uses on a daily basis are anti-dumping, things like pencils and candles. Is that true, Scott? Uh, that's very true. That's very true. Um, both of those anti-dumping cases have been around for oh, many years. Um, and, again, as you mentioned, you know, things change fast, and there's new commodities and countries being added, well, I will say on a weekly basis, or at least investigations. Um, and most of the investigations do turn into a case where, uh, unfortunately, you have to pay additional duties to bring that product in the country. Um, Again, working with a broker, you're going to know this, you'd know in advance. Um, Please do give your broker some time to do the research. There's uh, many places to check. And let me just say on on anti-dumping duties, it is a, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a wording, um, it's a description, I will say, of a product. It's not tariff number specific. So we just talked about tariff numbers and how everything in the world has, a, in the U.S. anyways, a 10-digit tariff code assigned to it. Um, the anti-dumping duty is a description of uh, an article, if you will, or articles that are going to be subject to this anti-dumping duty. Uh, does the government try to relate that description to tariff numbers? Yes. But that doesn't mean everything under a tariff number is going to be subject to anti-dumping. Um, so you do need to always look at what they call the scope of the anti-dumping um, ruling. Or um, um, so that's about, and that's how it's packaged, or that's how it's presented or imported. Um, when you say well, the scope, yes, it, uh, the the scope is what the Department of Commerce would say um, on pencils. We'll take for instance, um, they have to be encased in a in a wooden sheath. Um, it has to, uh, I'd have to go look at it. I don't have it in front of me. I apologize. But there's certain definitions or different um, requirements of a pencil that it has to meet in order to be subject to anti-dumping. Likewise, there's requirements that it has to meet to not be subject to anti-dumping. Um, there's a lot of them out there. Boy. Um, but is there, is there someone, so is this something that a customs broker should know, or is there a, a place where people send a sample or, or question a government official to say, hey, will this fall under an anti-dumping category? Right. Um, if, you, if you request from customs a binding ruling on a tariff classification, they will usually usually indicate that it may or may not be subject to anti-dumping. Um, it is then up to you to send it to... Um, in for a scope ruling uh, to, uh, I would have to look if it's either the um, International Trade Commission or Department of Commerce. I don't know which one you send it to. Um, but anyways, that, that's easily um, to, easy to find out. But you would send in an information to them that, you know, this is my product, to give a description where it's from, so on and so forth, and ask if it is subject to um, and the anti-dumping order for, say, pencils. And they'll come back with their review of the case and say, yes, it is, or no, it's not. Very important piece of paper to have, especially if they say it's not, because if customs tries to fight and say, hey, I want an extra 200% uh, percent duty on this, you can say, no, I have my letter here. I've done my homework, and it is not subject, subject to anti-dumping duties. Wow. Now, again, a good broker is going to include that with the entry package so customers wouldn't even need to ask. 
but um, and so do you, yeah, you now, use that information. And so, you, uh, of course, don't you continually use that information when you, if you're going to be importing that product on a regular basis, you make sure you have that available for you know, broke the, the customs broker use yeah, or whoever you're importing from. Yes, every import um, would need to have that letter in there. Um, note, you know, noted on the invoice by the broker, handwriting, you know, please see next page, um, you know, excluded from anti-dumping order, part of Department of Commerce ruling, blah, 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 um, something of that nature. So don't, re- don't, so don't rely on uh, people overseas. If a factory overseas says, oh, don't worry, it's not an anti-dumping product. You need to oh, still no, no, investigate. No. You, you need to do your due you, diligence oh, for sure. Um, and I have another I quick just, question. This, the sure. anti, anti-dumping um, is... When we're talking anti-dumping, each country is different, correct? So if uh, people are importing into Europe or they're importing into the Middle East or they're importing into different places, their anti-dumping rulings and laws may may be different than here in the U.S. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, And a lot of the anti-dumping rules um, are set by our different trade agreements. Um, Going into Europe, you're going to have anti-dumping on certain American products. Uh, we don't think about that because it's not really newsworthy, uh, but I can I can assure you that um, there are products going into the into Europe and other parts of the world, Asia, South America, um, that come from the United States or are not just come from the United States, but are of U.S. origin. Um, that those countries have initiated anti-dumping cases against us. Um, there's other countries as well that have things banned from our country. You know, um, uh, food products are a big one. Um, mm-hmm. for, for banning. Um, another subject, but yes, there, it works It works both ways. It's not just the United States doing this. Other countries do that to the United States as well. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's important think, because a lot of, like I said, a lot of our, our listeners and followers are from all over the world. So um, this applies to everyone. Just make sure, like, you know, like Scott said, do your due diligence. I mean, yeah. you need to make right. sure. Check, yeah, yeah whatever, whatever, it whatever. Could be, it could be a, you know, a China to Germany. I mean, Germany mm-hmm. might have anti-dumping on something from China or, um, we'll say, Brazil to Spain or, you know, whatever it happens, whatever countries, there might be anti-dumping. It's not just the United States. I mean, every country can, you know, put a case or an order against another country and it goes through world organizations that say, no, that was unfairly done. Um a really quick thing, just for United States listeners, um, you probably noticed over the last couple of years when you buy um, meat at the supermarket, it's labeled, you know, product of USA, product of Mexico, product of Brazil, product of, you know, wherever. Um, Mexico and Canada got very upset at the United States by having that law um, about the meat labeling country of origin. Um, in effect, saying that, well, U.S. consumers then are going to pick U.S. raised and grown and harvested meat products over Canada or Mexico. They brought it to the World Trade Organization, who reviewed it and said, yes, well, it's discriminating against these other countries. U.S., you can't do this anymore. So here in the United States, we live in a country where we cannot have our meat products labeled anymore because the other two countries threatened to put anti-dumping duties on commodities that we, big commodities that we export to those two countries, yet the shirt that I'm wearing has to have the country of origin on it. Wow. Doesn't mm-hmm. make sense to me, but those yeah. are the laws. And, and also that's something that's, that's very important. Uh, when people are importing a product, country of origin, um, uh, by law, aren't you supposed to have the country of origin somewhere on the package or the box? Uh, y- yes. Um, that is a probably a topic for a whole program, (laughs) (laughs) but uh, in in a nutshell, country of origin is required on just about everything. There are a few exceptions. There there is an exception list of articles that cannot be marked, Uh, but in general, everything needs to be marked with the country of origin so that it is um, available and noticed by the ultimate purchaser right and and, and and even some of the investigative work that I've done it has to be legible you know I've seen some of these companies who write um, you know uh, designed in France and then in tiny little letters it says made in China I have to use a magnifying glass y- you're not supposed to do that and again that these these are rules and regulations again when you're getting to the physical product business or starting a product you have to make sure that you're you're 
showing this product and even showing your customs broker this is how it's going to come in this is you know just don't go to a design team because they're not the importers and they're not the people who are ultimately going to decide if it's allowed in the country uh if you go to a qualified licensed customs broker he should be able to look at that and saying well where's the country of origin where's this where's that you don't you have to have that information on your product and i think that's the key i mean it's it's surrounding yourself with the experts with the people who can help you because if you're new to this business, you're not going to know this information. So we're going to take a quick break here. We are Karen and Neil Gortzman. We are the Private Label University, and we will be right back. News Talk 710 KNUS. Would an extra $1,000 a month, $5,000 a month, or even $10,000 a month help you live a better life? It doesn't have to stop there. People just like you are making thousands of dollars selling products on Amazon. The best part is it's simple. All you need is a product. Karen and Neil Gortzman, creators of Private Label University, are here to show you how. How to find that perfect product so you can join millions of people and start making the money that everyone is talking about on Amazon. Private Label University. University unlocks 35 years of secrets about sourcing, importing, and private labeling products for big chain stores. Karen and Neil truly believe in you, so much that they'll invest $500 towards your tuition in the Private Label University program, the Import Success Formula. Go to Karen and Neil's website at privatelabeluniversity.com and enroll in the Import Success Formula program. Enter code PLU for $500 off your tuition of the program when paid in full. So what are you waiting for? Head over to privatelabeluniversity.com and sign up today. Are you ready to kick that sugar addiction, reduce belly fat, and still enjoy delicious sweets and breads? Yes, it is possible. Recipe for Wellness is a company that is run by Karen Russell, a world-renowned certified health coach and nutritionist with over 20 years of experience working with the most challenging health issue facing our society. Karen has figured out the secret to a healthier life for all of us without sacrificing sweets and offers very yummy products like cookies, brownies, and breads that are actually healthy for you. That's right, cookies and bread that are not only delicious, but healthy too. If you're ready to lose weight, increase your energy level, sleep soundly, reduce stress, take control of your health, and not have to give up sweets or bread, then visit RecipeForWellness.com. That's Recipe, the number four, Wellness.com. Again, to shop online for delicious and healthy sweets, visit RecipeForWellness.com. Start living your healthier life without guilt today. We now return to the Private Label University with your hosts, Karen and Neil Gortzman on News Talk 710 KNUS. So for those of you just joining us, we are Karen and Neil Gortzman, and you are listening to the Private Label University, where we unlock the secrets each week to your online selling success. So we are speaking with Scott Blizzard, who is educating all of us on the ins and outs of what to be aware of with regards to customs when importing products into the U.S. That's right. You know, there's so many changes we talk about that that go on each day with uh, products coming into the nation, um, how they're classified, anti-dumping. We just talked about and it, it can go on. There's so many things you should know when you're importing a product. You know, the markings on the package, the countries of origin. Um, so, Scott, I do have a question. You know, uh, people have they, – they hear the term NAFTA thrown around a lot uh, where they say, oh, well, it's a product, it's NAFTA, it's duty-free. Uh, is that true? Is it actually duty-free when a product falls under NAFTA uh, category? It is. Um, there are going to be some uh, uh, categories such as maybe uh, textile articles where it's a reduced duty rate. Um, and some others, but for the most part, yes, NAFTA, a NAFTA claim will generate a duty-free um, clearance or entry. So what, what's an example of a product? So if I bring in, so Canada, of course, is under NAFTA. Mexico is under NAFTA. If I bring in right. uh, shoelaces that are made in Canada, is it duty-free? Well, you know, I would actually have to go to the tariff book that we've been talking about, the tariff, uh, Harmonized Tariff Code, uh, look at the, the tariff, and that will tell us if, that article is duty-free from that country uh, or territory, NAFTA territory, meaning the United States, Canada, or Mexico. Uh, We have free trade agreements with so many countries. um, To keep all of them straight and what the duty rates are just off the top of my head, I don't know. Um, My guess is that shoelaces, um, leather ones are probably going to be duty-free, textile ones, Oh, but not everything duty not duty everything is duty free. It, so, it's if a, a, no. so if a country is listed, does it mean everything that is made in that country is duty free? Um, or reduced duty. 
It works okay. both ways. And I think what, what you know what we've taught in our program at the Private Label University, and I'm sure um, you, of course, are well uh, knowledge about, is that you know it's illegal. For, for example, since China is not a duty-free zone, and I believe South Korea is, falls under NAFTA, or there's a, a free trade agreement with South Korea, you can have products shipped from China that are, let's say, fall under anti-dumping, or, and then shipped into South Korea, and then shipped into uh, America, and claim they're from Korea. Well, that You are correct. Um, origin is origin, and it does not mean where it is shipped from. So Customs considers that a, a transshipment, and um, again, going back to what we just talked about, anti-dumping, uh, people will try to ship, oh, honey is a, is a, is a big one, um, anti, big high anti-dumping duties from China. They'll ship it to another country and try to claim it's from there. Well, obviously Customs Lab can test it and realize, you know, uh, through a chemical profile that it didn't come from that third country. It really came from China, and boy, is everyone in a lot of trouble. Um, yeah, NAFTA will cover United States, Canada, and Mexico. As you mentioned, we have a U.S.-Korea free trade agreement, U.S., um, what do we have, Australia, Bahrain, Chile, uh, some Caribbean countries, Israel, Jordan, um, boy, Oman, Peru, Singapore. Uh, just off so there's, the top quite, of my head, there are, there's, there's quite a few. Yes, and again, it takes an expert um, to do all the research don't call up your broker at five minutes to five on a Friday and expect them to be able to, you know, tell you that, yes, everything is fine and what the requirements are. All the trade agreements require different documentation, um, so on and so forth. They're, they are research projects, and they do take some time. So as a customs broker, you actually would handle whether it be uh, sea freight or, or I should say ocean freight or air freight. Is that correct? Well, most brokers do have a, a freight um, uh, department associated with them. Uh, myself as a customs broker, I don't necessarily arrange freight. I have in the past, and I can. But you're uh, but you're involved with with the clearance of it if it's air or sea. Oh, that is correct. Okay, yeah, that's what I. I'm truck, sorry, that's what I meant. Truck and rail. I mean, different. There's different. Any way that it enters the country, barge, you name it. So I mean, so it, so no matter what one. size you are, someone can't think. Well, I'm just a small guy. I'm a small retailer. I don't do a lot of importing. Or if I just started a physical product business and I'm on Amazon, I'm really small. I don't really have to work with a customs broker, or I, I don't have to notify uh, or find out about my product because no one's going to notice me. You can't take that attitude. Is that correct? You know, we tell our oh, students that, if you're in business, you're in business, whether you're small or large. You're an importer, and if you're importing, you must follow the rules. And exactly what. Scott that said earlier, so you get stuck with something anti-dumping, and they just happen to pull you over. I mean, you could literally go to lose the your business. business. You yeah. go to business before is, it even started. Very much so. Very much so. Um, Cousins has a phrase that they use. Even if you're maybe not the importer of record, we've talked about shipments under eight hundred dollars that really don't have an entry against them. Um, if they do an audit of that courier or um, some other means. They will come back to you and say, you know, you were you caused this import to happen. Um, Amazon didn't cause the import to happen. The guy in the standing next to you didn't cause this import to happen. You did, even though your name wasn't on the paperwork, you know, that the airline gave to customs. You caused it to happen, so therefore you are responsible. Right, and I think people have to understand also the listeners, and we tell our students, you can't finagle, you can't kind of make up a, a scenario where, well, I want to get a lower duty rate. So, can you classify it under this? It, you know, a product is or classified put a for a reason, of right? Cost. Or put it like if we talked earlier. Scott said, you know, you you can't just make up a value where you know it's only a, a penny when really the value is a dollar. And I've seen that in, yeah. in in forums too that I've read where my manufacturer is going to put a lower price so that I don't have to you know I can dodge the the duty on it. And that's a no no, correct? And that has been um, the 30-some years I've been in this business, uh, that has been a common element, unfortunately. Um, and it always, it, in the end, it catches up with that importer and they get in trouble, um, whether it's an audit of them, an audit of the manufacturer, an audit, uh, audit of the broker, audit of the shipper, many different ways that Customs has to find that information. Now, don't forget, they also have um, a lot of computer intelligence they're going to see something classified at a penny when they're used to seeing it classified, you know, between 75 cents and $1.50. Those are what they call the census parameters. It's going to flow up, throw up all sorts of red flags, and they will be investigating. Mm -hmm. And so they can, they actually can custom say, 
uh, we're not going to allow you to import any more shipments until we really investigate what you're doing? Um, no. Um, that will happen if you fail to pay duty bills, additional bills for, say, anti-dumping. That process takes some time, um, several months at least, usually, um, unless it's a national security violation, which, thank goodness, I have not had to directly deal with. Um, if it's something of that nature, obviously that's very serious and you're not going to be importing anything. Um, if it, it's just a, the money thing, admissibility, it will take a couple months, um, perhaps up to six months, maybe even longer, for customs to pull your, your, your importing privileges. So, but so you know, th again, that's I think the important thing that all our listeners should know that when you're starting a business or you're in business or if you're a retailer that's looking and in getting involved with another category, um, look at make sure that those products are approved. Uh, they don't fall into any um, sensitive category, or if they are, that you know what you're doing. Like Scott mentioned, you have to know what you're doing, making sure that you've done your, your due diligence on the factory you're getting it from. Uh, if a factory overseas all of a sudden tells you, oh, don't worry, it doesn't fall under anti-dumping, or we have specials. I hear this all the time. Oh, no, the factory has special certifications. Well, there's no special certifications. The law is the law in the USA. And if the law says that you're not allowed to import that product or it falls under anti-dumping, a company in China just can't say, oh, don't worry, we have special certificates. What do, you, um, do you hear that all the time, correct. Scott? Yeah, we do. And, in fact, just last week I was listening to a, um, a, a webinar uh, about anti-dumping duties that was put on by Customs and the National Brokers Association, and that exact phrase was brought up, just what you have said, Neil, um, that – uh, factory over in another country says, oh, I have special privileges, my, my goods aren't subject to this. Customs knows that if they're saying it in a webinar, for us to remind our clients to be aware that, that this has happened. They call them anti-dumping scams. That's the official customs terminology uh, that they use in the webinar and that we see in other uh, printed publications. Um, there is no such thing. So do your homework. Find out if it is or isn't. Um, if it's one of those gray areas, there's always a scope ruling that can be sent into the appropriate government authorities where they'll tell you whether it is or is not subject to anti-dumping duties. Yeah, so you can see, you know, importing, it's not an easy thing. People think, oh, I can just go to Alibaba or AliExpress. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people who teach programs online who just say, oh, don't worry, just go on to Alibaba, go on to any uh, site you see in China, just start ordering it. Um, keep it under that low value, and, you know, you're just a free ride to make money. And we tell our students that's not the way it is. We say it's very important when you're starting a business, whether you've been in business for 40 years or you're starting a physical product business online with Amazon or any other online platform, that you really have to do your homework and you have to align yourself. yourself. We tell people all the time, you have to align yourself with people who know what they're doing, and especially when it comes to importing, having that licensed broker. And I say licensed broker, not just someone who says, well, I can do it. Maybe he hasn't uh, renewed his license in 20 years. You know, it, it, again, things change all the time, and it's very important to keep up to date with these rules. And I think that's the key. Correct. I think a lot of people are kind of jumping on the bandwagon. You know, I've been importing now on Amazon for six months or eight months or a year, and taking their knowledge, which is so limited, limited yeah. And and trying to, you know, to to gain from it. And, and that's what's so sad. And that's why, you know, positioning yourself and surrounding yourself with people who have years of experience. Um, and I'm not talking six months experience. I'm talking years like, you know, you mentioned 30 plus years. I mean, that is valuable. So um, we need to actually wrap up. But can you tell our listeners is there a site that they can go to online to get information, whether it's about tariff codes or anti-dumping, and just so that they can kind of familiarize themselves um, so that they have information? An idea of what, yeah. yeah. How to get that Absolutely, information. Absolutely, Karen. Absolutely. Um, I would recommend always starting with Customs website. Um, that is www.cbp, as in Customs and Border Protection, .gov, not .com, but .gov. Um, in there, you will, there's a search box. You can put in you know, search terms like anything, and it will bring up a wealth of information. Um, there's tabs at the top, and the first one is basic import and export. And there's even a section in there that talks about Internet purchases. Um, I would suggest anybody review that if they're, they're thinking about doing this. Um, there's a wealth of information there, and that would be my first go-to uh, 
you know, internet website, and then from there you can launch into the other government agencies or other places that you know customs may direct you. But it's a great place. They spent a lot of money um, in revamping their website, you know, over the last couple of years. That even us as brokers, we use it quite frequently. I, wow. I use it every day. That, that, that's amazing. Yeah, that's a great tool to have. Great and I think, source. And you know, if you'd like the opportunity for more information. Uh, from Scott Blizzard, reach out to us at the Private Label University. That's www.privatelabeluniversity.com, where we'll have the contact information uh, for Scott Blizzard. Um, he's, again, a, an unbelievable person for, for knowledge uh, as far as rules and regulations. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And we have a button there you can click. Um, it says send message. Um, leave us a message, and um, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear what you thought about our uh, show today and um, again if you want an opportunity to get more information from Scott please leave us a message and we'll get that information to you so thank you for joining us Scott it was wonderful thank and you so much, Scott. Um, thank you everyone for listening we are Karen and Neil Gwartzman we are the private label university I want to be a billionaire so freaking bad thank you for joining Karen and Neil Gordsman at 710 KNUS the private label university the only show that dares to unlock the secrets to your online selling success so you can start making money and living your dreams remember to visit us over at www.privatelabeluniversity.com for tons of free content while you're there leave us a message and we'll air your comments and questions on the show listen to us every Sunday at 9 a.m. Mountain Time the dynamic duo Karen and Neil are now signing off.